Rome, such a glorious and magnificent place. We are in hiding as we plan our next steps in finding the envoy of the prelate. We believe he was abducted on his way north from the city. I snuck off to continue my training at the abbey and hope that no one unscrupulous has followed me back. While I admit I am only a novice, my skills at healing and connection with God is sure to keep us alive on this dangerous journey. While I was training, Rebecca sold some of the goods we took from the bandits at the market. Namely, some gold and silver that fetched good florins. After a couple of days rest we are ready to venture forth and see what comes next. I, Vincenzo, vow to keep my allies from harm and to find the envoy alive and well. Hey everybody, it's Doug here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to our continued playthrough of Nova Aetis uh, Renaissance, where we uh, have completed our first mission, and now we're going to, we're now in the city of Rome, we're doing some shopping and maybe uh, resting up and healing up and getting ready for our next adventure, whatever that may be. So I'm pretty excited about that because this, the first uh, couple scenarios I thought were really that the first scenario rather is a two-parter was super fun. I really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to our next one. But I did, of course, not do something right. <laughs> uh, actually, it wasn't a big deal. I just need to correct something. So, you know, I, I got the Elementium, but remember when we get when we get uh, when we defeat a Stratiote, we get an Elementium. Well. We defeated a total of four of them, and I was looking at my stack, and I'm like, why do I only have one? I should have more than one. We should actually have two, because we got half of our stash from that last adventure that we got to keep. So I'm just going to give us another one. We're going to play that out right there, so we can get on with our, our rest and then travel phases. So, super excited about that. Of course, you heard uh, the recap, and now we're ready to go. Thank you, Sophia, for the recap. And we're going to dive right in. Now, the first thing that you do in the rest phase, we've kind of done some of it. It says, uh, the last played mission will tell you where to where you can perform the rest phase. We're in Rome, for, for example. And we've got our resources. Remember, we also got this achievement of, of uh, what's it called? It's called um, Watchful, which allowed us to get some extra resources. And may do that again in the future. I just don't know what that's going to do. We did mark it on our, our sheet, though. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going each hero can spend experience. So we're going to take a look at that really quickly. Uh, we're going to look at each hero and see if we want to spend the one experience that they have right now on some abilities. Uh, the answer is going to be yes, but maybe not for everybody and maybe not what you think. Okay, so here we are with Valerio. Now he's got a couple things that he can do. Now remember, we only have one experience, so we can't get some of these super cool or uh, uh, tougher abilities, but we can get a few of them. And I'm kind of looking at two right now. One is insult. It's called. It's an intimidate skill. It says for zero time we can gain plus one on our perillium. Uh, you can use this skill once per activation. So we can basically make force like enemies to come after Valerio. I just don't know how tough he is right now, so I'm not sure if I want to do that. But we also have uh, witness me. It says it's a passive. If at the beginning of your activation, at least one of your heroes, one other hero is within three plus of you, you gain a lucky token. I don't know what a lucky token does, so let's take a look at that. I saw that, and we've got our handy-dandy little book here that tells us what lucky tokens do. Um, maybe. <laughs> Sometimes, they, some, oh, I think some of the major tokens are not, some of the major things are on here, but I assume if we look up lucky, we'll figure out what a lucky token does. So let's see if we can find no lucky either. Okay, well, that's not, oh, here we go. We'll probably be on this side here. Let's see. Lethal. No, we're going to have to look in the book. What's a lucky token? I have no idea. I imagine it gives you luck. I'm going to keep flipping through here until I find something, because, you know, that's what this book is for. Um, there we go. There's a lucky token right there. I knew it would be in here somewhere. A hero who has this token may discard it after performing any test. If they do, they may re-roll uh, a die. They may, uh, they may, I think that's re-roll. Is that re-roll or roll another die? I'm not sure. But let's look. Um... Mm -mm -mm. Looking for that symbol here. Reroll one die. So we can reroll one die with a lucky token. That's not bad. It says it to be passive if, it, if at the beginning of your activation, at least one of the heroes, you gain a lucky token. So he's always got a reroll. I kind of like that. It says wit that's called Witness Me. We also have this one thing called Hawk Strike. Now it takes an extra two time, but it says if the target of this attack is adjacent to you, consider their defense value decreased by one, their strength value decreased by one to a minimum of one. That goes for everybody, but I, I guess it's the hawk strike. He's doing this 
special attack. I don't know if I like that too much, uh, but I do want to make sure. I think we're going to get the Witness Me. That seems like a really, really good thing to do. Now, that does kind of um, set our path because we have Knight and Mercenary. Now, I believe, I'm going to have to look, I think if you have these three, that's when you advance to this. I'm not sure. Um, that's It gives you the path to advance to that. But we're going to do Witness Me. It's a survival see, survival skill. we got two. We got Reckless Charge, Hawk Strike, Insult, Counter Attack. We haven't gotten those yet. So we're going to spend that one experience point that we have. We're going to have Witness Me. I will mark that on the actual character sheets uh, in a minute. But let's go on now to Sophia. There's a couple on here that I, I really, really like. In fact, I like all of them. I have a feeling that Parkour or Stealth are going to be the one but we have that we take. But we also have Shadow. It says Search Passive. When you perform a defense test on attacks by enemies who are four plus or more threat from you, or you may you can reroll one die. That's okay. But look at this. Stealth gives us passive of jump and climb. Jump two, climb one. We already got a climb one from our grappling hook, but that means we can maybe swap that out for a different item at some point. And then this passive, which I think is the one we're going to take. So Sophie is going to be a thief type, right? Um, it says uh, you can move over squares occupied by enemies, but you cannot stop on them. You do not cause, this is the key piece here, because this actually affected us in our last game, you do not cause a re reaction tax by enemies you remain adjacent to and who occupy spaces into which you pass during your movement action. It's one experience. I, th I think we have to do that, right? I mean, she is our rogue, and stealth, you know, that's a thing. So we are going to, uh, we're going to get, uh, it's called acrobatics, actually. It's a stealth skill, so we're going to get that for her. That was her one experience spent. Next we have Vincenzo. Let's see what he's got here. I think there's a couple of things that are really quite good. We got astrology. It's a, it's a prayer. It takes two time. Perform a uh, mental test for each success. Choose a hero within four of you. Uh, in, you included. The chosen hero gains an astro token. Well, once again, I don't know what an astro token does, but we're going to find out. <laughs> so, astro token. The hero who has this token may discard it after performing any test to add a symbol to that result. That would be really beneficial and powerful for his healing, which benefits from having moon symbols on it, right? His healing pouch thingy. Majugu. So, let's see what else he's got. Plus, every some, I'm sure there's going to be some other things. Uh, he can't do mysticism. He can do sacred fire. It's medicine. It says plus one time. Uh, this attack gains uh, this ability if you obtain at least one sun symbol, discard one damage. So it, it helps him heal as he's attacking. That's pretty good. And then we got Purify. Prayer it's to perform a mental test. Choose a hero, you included, within a number of squares from, from you equal to three plus the number of mental uh, uh, successes you have. That hero discards a negative status token of their choice. Hmm, I like that one too. But I, I do think I like the Sacred Fire. Huh. I think we're going to do, oh, I mean, I don't know, between Sacred Fire and Purify. Sacred Fire allows him to heal himself, though. I think we're going to do that. Healing, I, I, I took a beating last time. It just doesn't take much to get a beating. So we're going to take Sacred Fire. And now also, I think that this tells you under this class, you can only take certain types of skills. Like, we can only take the one red school. That's what we have. But you'll see how it works. It's, it's um, I don't know, I'm still getting used to it figuring it out. But that's what we're going to do. Also, we should reset these to zero. They are no longer at the range that they're at. They have been reset. So, and then last but not least, we're going to have Rebecca. Okay, Rebecca, let's see what you have that you can spend your experience on. She has Pyromancy, Passive. Each of your spells gains burn. That's really good because we saw what happened with burn last time. It actually saved us and, and dropped a guy. Mysticism. Uh, for one time, we can uh, we get and plus one to our perillium. Uh, we can choose an enemy within four of that of, of you. That enemy gains a distracted token. We'll take a look at what a distracted token is. Oh, you know, I like this one a lot. Doe eyes. <laughs> Doe eyes. That's funny. She bats her eyes at somebody and they're suddenly... Oh, it's, a, it's a one, too. Okay, okay. Well, we can do... Uh, Deceive. Oh, we can't do Pyromancy yet. And we, well, let's look at Doe Eyes. Two time gain a shielded token. That's going to be pretty good. And then uh, the last one she get is Mage Step. Search. Passive. You, uh, each of your spells gain one. Uh, once you have resolved the effects of the spell, gain two dashes. I don't know what that means. Let's take a look at 
dashes and um, and also we want to look at shielded because shielded may be the way to go right a hero who has this token may discard it when they are about to suffer at least one wound the hero suffers one less so we can get two shielded tokens um, or we can gain dashes I wonder what dashing looks like. I wonder if I can find it in here. I don't remember seeing anything about dashing, but we'll look. We'll look. Uh, no distracted disadvantage. I don't see dashing, but I'm sure it means we can move. I think we move too without being uh, affected by anything, if I recall. I think I read something about it somewhere in the book. Let's take a look in the main book, where I put that. That's on my table. Yeah, I think we're... I think, man, it's between main step or... Doe, I think doe eyes. We're going to take doe eyes because, uh, well, because shielded tokens not taking damage is a good thing, right? For especially for someone like her who has absolutely no defense. So we're going to take doe eyes right there, and that means we've spent all of our experience. So here you go. You can see that we have spent our experience, and that is going to be it for that part of the the rest phase. Okay, next up, it says after okay, now that we've all spent our experience, we can't go to advanced classes. We can't, we didn't gain our our uh, destinies yet or anything like that. So we go to each hero and each companion, which we don't have any, may visit a single shop during the rest of the phase. Choose carefully the availability of places in a single shop uh, may only may be may also be limited. The limit is indicated by the number of the number next to the town or village symbol uh, next to the name of the shop. So, like, if we're in a city, we can have three people go to the chirurgeon. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, only one person go to the barracks. Two people go to the church. One to the market. Uh, four to the inn. So all four can go to the inn. Because we're in a city. We're in Rome. Rome's a big city. And you can see that uh, we have the Rome card here. Like, at the church, it actually costs us two less florins to do that there. Uh, but uh, we don't have any florins yet. However, we do have stuff. And let's take a look at our stuff because we can sell things uh, at the city right here. Like we can go to the market. I've got belladonna, wood. I think uh, silver is worth quite a bit. I got silver, metal, and gold. I think we can probably, I don't, I don't want to sell all of it necessarily. We don't have a lot. But I think this would be the place and time to sell it. Let me get the book and see what that looks like. I wonder if it's in the little, in the, in the little, gray book here because most things that are quick reference are like does it show us what we can sell things for in this little book uh maybe uh, no it doesn't look like it it does not so we're gonna i'm gonna get the main book and see yeah if we can figure out how much we can sell things for because you can at the market um it says you can sell reagents and that's what all these are Ah, uh, right on our sheet it tells us how much things are worth so uh, silver and gold are three, so I could get a number of florins by selling the silver and gold that we have. Metal is, is two to sell. You can see there are quite a bit to buy, but I, it might be worth selling at least the silver and gold just because, you know, money would be really good. <laughs> I'm sure we're going to find some use for money. For example, we can go gambling at the end. We can do things at the church. We can make a donation. We can go to the doctor's office. We don't have to worry about that right now. We can go to the barracks. We can hire companions. Mm, it'd be awesome. I do think we're going to do that. So we're going to take the silver and gold, and these are both pecunias, pecunias, and we're going to sell those. That's going to give us a total of six. We're going to hold on to the rest. I'll mark those in our on our record sheet later. We're going to hold on to the rest. So we got six right now. Um, and what what can we do now? Well, I have to send somebody there for that. So I'm going to send. Let's see. Um, I will send. Uh, I'm going to send her there. We, the artist doesn't do us any good because we don't have crafting. Uh, we could go to the bathhouse and pay two florins. Here, the bathhouse is actually zero, uh, minus two florins. Uh, the hero who paid for the entrance uh, gains an advantage token. So we might have her do that. Advantage tokens. Well, she can get advantage tokens. So I think she will do the market. She's going to go to the market where we sold our silver and gold. She got some money for us there. Um, at the barracks, we can hire. We can also pay the cost in florins. No, we don't want to do that. Uh, we can go to the church. Each hero who visits the church may pay four florins or two florins at Rome. Uh, to um, may pay four florins, erasing them from your campaign sheet. That's going to be two. If they do, they start the mission with a blessed token. We can so Vincenzo can get blessed tokens. I'm not to worry about that. The end. We can go gambling. Wager 0 to 5 florins by erasing them from your campaign sheet. Roll 2d8 and apply the effects 
double uh, double ones. You lose twice as many florins as you wagered up to the maximum available on the campaign campaign sheet. Uh, ten. If we roll ten, you win twice as many florins. If you roll eleven plus, you win the amount of florins you wagered. All other results, you lose the amount of florins you wagered. So we got to roll over a ten on two d two d eight. That's not great odds. Not terrible, but it's not great. Uh, the bathhouse. Uh, each hero who visits the bathhouse can pay two florins. In this play, case, none. The bathhouse are free there apparently. The hero who paid the entrance to the bath starts the next. Uh, mission their next mission with adva advantage token on their hero sheet. Uh, I mean, yeah, I think what we'll do since it's free, we're gonna send. Um, no, no, we're gonna send Sophia there. We're not gonna gamble, so she's going to the baths. And again, we can look at symbols on the book. We find the other, the little book here. We gotta figure out what token is a advantage token. I think it's the one with the die on it, if I'm not mistaken. But let's let's take a look at that. So she visited there, um, which now how many people? Only one can visit the baths, so that's kind of a bummer. But uh, come on, this little book isn't that big. You think I'd be able to find something pretty quickly, right? There we go. Um, advantage token is the one with the die. Yeah. So we're going to get an advantage token for Sophie. Now that only it's only one, but still you never know that could end up saving her bacon. So she's got one advantage token there. It's good for her. Uh, we can't go to a mentor because we don't have enough stuff for that. Um, I don't think Vincenzo going to the church makes any sense at all because he can get advantage tokens through his relic. So maybe we'll send, uh, not advantage tokens, but blessed tokens. Maybe what we'll do is we're going to send, um, yeah, we're going to send Rebecca. She's going to go spend some time at the church. Now that is going to cost us uh, two florins, so we'll have four left after this. And that's going to give her a blessed token that she will hang on to and use in a dire emergency as we go on our next adventure. And then I think for Vincenzo and, I mean, we can get another person at the church. I don't see, no, you, it's only one, even in the city. No, that's, I'm sorry, I have her in the wrong spot. Wait, she went there. She can't do that. She went to the market. Maybe I should have sent, yeah, that's okay. I'll give a blessed token to Valerio then. He'll go to the church for two florins and do that. And that just leaves Vincenzo, who I just don't think has anything he wants to do. Um, we don't need to remove injuries. We don't need to heal, because it said we healed in the, at the end of the, the last adventure. And this is in the barracks, and you know, we're not gonna hire any mercy. So I think we're gonna stop there. We'll take our stuff. Let me mark that down on our sheet. Okay, here it is on our sheet. We've got one belladonna, one wood, one metal, and four florins as we head into our next mission which we're going to get started with right now. One thing I can show you is our map of Italy. You can see that we are in Rome right now, so I have a feeling we're going to be moving up this direction on the map. We'll see how it goes, but that, that is on the other side of the city board, just for your reference. And then we're going to get out our next envelope and see what our next adventure is. I believe that's what we're going to... I think we got to do a travel phase first. I'm going to check that and see. It does say that we perform a travel phase for this mission. So what we have here is we have the, the map of the world. So we're going, we're starting in Rome. We're going to be traveling up to Spoleto. We need to, it says there's a little number here. It says three. That means during our trip up there, we have to draw three event cards. So we'll draw them. Let's get our first one out and see what happens as we travel on the road. Things are going to happen to us. There are only 10 of these, so I don't know how many times we have to see all of them over again, but we'll see. So the first one's going to be exploration. While on the road, an unexpected opportunity presents itself to you, but will all the glitters be gold? You may play a random exploration mission. Oh, man. Um, wow, let me think about that. Do I want to do that now? This seems awfully early to be taking a chance, like doing a random exploration mission, but I'm going to look it up. Okay, these are the side missions, but I think for now we're going to pass on that. It says we may, so we're going to take that as one of the three we've drawn. We're going to get back to our, our deck. We'll give it a quick cut, see what happens to us next. For a piece of bread, in a nearby village, tempers are running high. The people are tired of the tributes demanded by the Vatican. Nerves are about to fray, and perhaps you could take advantage of it. You can mark S2 side mission, the convoy rare in the side missions. Okay, doesn't mean we have to take it. We just get to mark it. So we're going to 
We're going to do that because I don't see why we wouldn't. So on, on active side, where's our side mesh? I'm going to look at that and get it put up there. I did mark the convoy of Riaro S2 in our um, our stuff, and we're going to put that aside. So that is that. Next up, we're going to go with this one. Amateur astrologer in the tent erected near the side of the road. A mischievous looking woman offers to read your fortune. Come, I will read you stars in the cards. Each hero in turn may roll three dice. If, uh, if we get three successes, you can change your zodiac sign to what we did. We did you know what? This is a good time to talk about this. I didn't do this because I thought, well, it might be hard. Um, and I didn't know, you know, it might be hard to add this in. It might be complicated. It might add complication. But there is these things, if I can find them, they're Zodiac cards. They're in here somewhere. I will, give me a moment, I will find them. Here they are. We could have passed one out to each of the characters um, at the beginning of the game. It's an, it's an add-on. I didn't add it on originally. You're supposed to do it at the beginning of session zero. Um, but, like, there's are little advanced advantages that you can get. Um, Maybe I'll deal these out. I don't know. Let, let me think about that for a second. It might be something worth doing. Let's do this. So, it says that uh, in this card we could change our zodiac. Nothing happens. Or you cannot use your zodiac sign the next mission. How about this? We're going to talk to the amateur astrologer who's going to tell us what our zodiac sign is. And we will assign them at random. What do you think of that? I think that's a pretty good way to do it. Now, I do think you pick them, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see... Uh, if, if I can see that in the book, where I, I literally just had, yeah, it's right here. Um, and I'm sorry, we're, I'm straying this from this, but I'm trying to teach you as I'm teaching myself this, this stuff as well. So I think it's interesting, but it says, uh, notice if you decide to use these cards, each year randomly draws a Zodiac card. Okay, so we're going to randomly draw a Zodiac card because we've met this amateur astrologer in the road. We're not going to take chances with it. We're just going to find out what it is we do. So Valerio is going to get this. He's a Pisces. It says for one time he can discard a bleeding token or spend one time to place a bleeding token on one of your weapons. Hmm. We'll keep that in mind. Now he's, we're starting to get some, some skills going here. It's pretty interesting. Okay, next up, Sophie is going to get a Taurus. Zero time, discard a stun token or spend one time to place a stun token on one of your weapons. Okay, so this allows us to do interesting things with our time. I like that because sometimes I didn't have anything to do. Uh, two time, choose a hero within plus three, it's a Scorpio. Uh, that hero discards a poisoned token. We don't have any of those, but we'll keep it in mind. And then last but not least, we got Rebecca. What is Rebecca? Rebecca is a, what? A, um, a Leo, she's a plus, no time upgrade. If this attack targets an enemy adjacent to you, you gain one reroll token. Nice. Got to remember these things. It's going to be hard. That's why I didn't want to play with them. But we're playing with them now, and that is all three of our events. So our events have proven to be nothing. That is just wonderful. So we'll take those up now. We'll put those away. And then we're going to get on to our mission. Zero one, a burning map. This is taking place in Spoleto. 01-1. Once in Spoleto, you immediately set out to find the inn where the Herald is staying. Among the narrow streets of the town, screams draw your attention to a cloud of smoke. I read that wrong, but it's okay. Uh, coming from a few blocks away, you rush in that direction, emerging into a small square. Bandits are setting fire to some buildings, shouting, threatening words in a dialect that is unfamiliar to you. A young gypsy girl appears to be leading them. The girl's barefoot and in gaudy clothes yells, Come on out! I'll burn all of Spoleto if I have to. I want that damn letter. Whatever that is. The young woman notices you and directs two men armed with arquebuses to point their weapons at you. Then she moves her gaze to a house and recites a litany in an unknown language while a ball of flame condenses in her hand. What kind of sorcery is this? It's clear that you ha your problems aren't over. Retrieving the missive and Harold won't be easy. Now remember, we were the Harold has gone missing and we've been sent to, to go track him down. So we're gonna shuffle the mystery tokens. We'll get those out. Um, the symbols on their front side so we don't see them. We're gonna place a covered mystery token on each of the house roofs. Okay, and then we're gonna reveal card two from our new envelope. 
So, okay, I have the mystery tokens set aside right there, but we're going to open up our folder, our envelope now, and see what our new mission is. So this is going to be 01, the burning map, and it says we're going to need these things. So I'm going to get those out in just a second, but it does say to go to card 2, correct? Not card 1, card 2. So let's check out card 2. Uh, that's our mission. Card 2 is our mission. Heroes goals. No enemies are left on the battlefield. Heroes defeat condition. If there is at least three heroes KO'd, read this. If the hologram strikes 830, we'll see where the hologium um, holo starts at. Read this. Three uh, houses are destroyed. Read this. Okay, so we don't want to destroy houses. We don't want to waste time. Uh, one time. Get water. Only if you are adjacent to the well and, and do not have a water token, gain a water token. One time. Put out a fire. Only if you are adjacent to a house, discard your water token and a fire token on the house um, you are adjacent to. Increase your uh, perillium, your threat, by one. Or put out flames. Discard your water token on an adjacent model. Discard a burn token that increases your, your plogium, or plarium by one. So that is our current mission. And it says reveal card three. Okay, card three. Our continued mission goals. Okay, uh, enemies' goals. Archibusters are going to attack the heroes. Stratiote, uh, five. If, so anybody with a five um, threat, set to flames. They move to become adjacent to the closest house, which is not destroyed. If they become adjacent to it, and they have at least three time, they spend their time and place a fire token on it. The Gypsy, four threat. Arcane Flame, she moves to within plus six of a house which is not destroyed. Then, if she has at least three time, she spends all of her time and places a fire token on the closest house, which is not destroyed within six range. So there's a lot going on in this scenario. I can't wait to see what happens. And then it says go on to card four, I guess. Okay, we're just plopping right in. Wow, okay. Um, special rules three, burning houses. It's not possible to climb on the roof of any house that is on fire during the mission. Okay. Destroyed houses. At the end of an enemy or group of enemies activation, reveal the mystery token on each house on on each house which has at least three fire tokens are placed. If there is this symbol is shown, reveal card five and ignore the rest of the special rules. Otherwise, remove the three fire tokens and turn the house upside down. Uh, uh, upside down house is considered destroyed. It is not possible to move through the squares occupied by a destroyed house. Start the mission. So that is going to be what we're going to do. But uh, where do we? How do we start the mission? Okay, I got it right here. I got everything we need to do. This is our map of the mission. Our Hologium, Hologium is going to start at 5. Uh, on Capricorn, we're going to have Stardiotes, Archibus, and a Gypsy. And on Aquarius, we're going to have the Heroes. And then we're going to read 0.1, which we've already done. So we are good. I'm going to put the rest of these away just for a moment because we're not, uh, we're not uh, using them yet. And we're going to get out all the components we need. And when I come back, we will be set up for the mission. All right, everybody. Here we are set up for our mission of taking down these people and the Gypsy and the... the Various enemies are all over the board. You can see there's, I barely see there's a guy up there. There's guy over, guys over here. Uh, I got our hero set up in the middle around the fountain. Uh, we have to put out fires. We have to do all kinds of crazy things. It's going to be really interesting uh, to see how this plays out. I'm very curious to see what this, how different this is compared to last scenario. I mean, it plays very differently. Uh, we're going to have to keep track of a lot of various things. Remember, we got three different mission cards and special actions that we can do. The Stratiotes are going to do certain things when we hit certain points in the Perillium, our, 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 our um, threat tracker. And so uh, I think we're going to move this up just a little bit here and put these here so I can keep really close track of all the things that we need to do now that we're starting this mission. Okay, with that said, I think this is a good place to end it for tonight. We did our, our full rest phase. We did our travel phase, and we did the beginning part of our mission, and we're about ready to get into the action. I have a feeling it's going to be a bit of a long one. So let's end it right now. We'll talk to you in the next episode. Take care, and I hope to see you soon. Have a wonderful evening, and uh, enjoy your time with your friends, family, and loved ones. Take care. Bye-bye.